All right, speaking of writing, um, I'm really excited to bring out a young writer to the stage of uh, California Free Thought Day and to introduce her. Um, she's actually our $500 scholarship winner, and Angela Garvey will be bringing her out. Hello, my name is Angela Garvey, and I am the scholarship chair for Free Thought Day. And this is our second uh, annual scholarship to be awarded, and I'm so excited. So this is our uh, winner this year, Juniper Neff, what a cool name. She is a senior at Ben Holt Academy, um, which is a charter high school in Lodi, California. She's also a 13-year Girl Scout and has represented 18,000 girls um, in the Girl Scouting world. And she also is taking orders for cookies after this event. So. Which, uh, without uh, further ado, I would like to uh, introduce Juniper to read her essay for us. Thank you so much, and congratulations again. Where's yours? Uh, I don't know. David didn't get oh, to me yet. David. <laughs> <laughs> David's bringing the essay. So when I first saw the prompt for this essay, I knew it was something that I was going to be able to write about fairly easily. Um, and be thankful for the restriction of 600 words, because what I wrote was well over 2,000, um, which means we would be here for a while. But this year is the, the shortened, more concise version uh, that I feel is very true to me. Everyone grows up with assumptions about themselves and the world around them. As a person grows older, these assumptions may be challenged through experiences and eventually found as incorrect. For children, the world is presented in a binary manner. Only through the process of growing up did I realize that the world is not that simple. For me, it was a quick peck on the lips and a flower shoved in my hand that left a movie-worthy montage of realization in my head. It was then that I learned, for the first time, that the world was not as binary as I had believed. Bisexuality, it was called, for me, meant an understanding of the confusing feelings I had felt. So I, with my new girlfriend, set out to explore the new world I had been presented with. However, after a while, dating became a struggle. For her, the relationship seemed effortless. But for me, I felt like I was drowning in texts and talking and obligation. The entire time, I felt like I was one step behind and two feet below trying desperately to convey the relationship that I felt we should have, but had no sense of. Eventually, the stress of it became too much, and our breakup ruined any chance of us being friends again. I didn't consider dating again for two years. In that time, I joined a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. The dungeon master of the group was from a different school, and after a few months of knowing him, asked me to his prom. But before I went with him, we agreed that we should go on a date. I came out of that date more confused than I had ever been before. I had fun, and I liked him, so why did I get sick to my stomach when I thought of going on another date? Prom was even worse. I had a good time, but I couldn't rid myself of the sinking feeling that I should be feeling something more. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't enjoy my relationship with him. Thus I learned for the second time that the world is much larger and much more diverse than I believed. Reading the word aromantic for the first time felt like coming home. The idea that not everyone felt romantic attraction, that there wasn't anything wrong with me, healed the hurt that I was feeling. Coming to terms with my identity was a long process in which I had to rid myself of the assumptions I had grown up with. That process has led me to learn that as children, the binary world we are presented with is something we are designed to outgrow. Thank you very much. And so on behalf of California Free Thought Day and all of our donors, Juniper, thank you so much for your amazing essay. There is your scholarship check. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
Congratulations again, what a wonderful speech.